Hi, do you have questions about SIMs and DIMs and DDR numbers and uh, DRAM terms, SDRAM, uh, GDDR RAM, HBM RAM, uh, UDIMs, uh, how about ECC memory? Do you have questions about RAM? We're going to address those in this video in just a bit. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. DRAM is Dynamic Random Access Memory. The dynamic means it has to be constantly refreshed uh, every so often. And all RAM that you're going to buy for a desktop computer use is going to be DRAM. And in fact, more specifically, it will be SDRAM, Synchronous Dynamic Random Access Memory means it's synced to an external clock from the microprocessor. So synchronous dynamic random access memory is what you're going to buy. But in practice, people use the terms interchangeably. They call it RAM or DRAM or SDRAM. Uh, in practice, for what you're going to buy, it's going to be all the same thing. Now, they did have SDR RAM, single data rate RAM, back in the day. Now everything is DDR RAM, double data rate. It, it, transfers double the number of things each clock cycle. So that's why it's the double data rate RAM. They went through generations, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, and that's where we're at now. We're at DDR4 as of time of this filming. Uh, very shortly, probably a year, maybe two years, we'll have DDR5 RAM to deal with, and you'll want DDR5 RAM because it's better. Each generation generally doubles the uh, memory capacity and doubles the bandwidth for each particular chip. So the higher the DDR number, the better the RAM is. However, you have to buy the RAM that your system was designed to use. And we'll address that in another video, but you, you can't put a DDR4 kit into a computer that was designed for DDR3. That doesn't work that way. They're completely different things. Now, speed names. Um, DDR3-1600, that's generally how you would buy the RAM, DDR3-1600. But sometimes you might see another number, like PC3-12800. And you're like, what? What's that? And some manufacturers might, they don't tend to do that anymore. Apple used to do that back in the day. But they might denote the PC number for the type of RAM. PC, you need PC3-12800. Well, the 3 refers to the DDR3. And the 12800 is just 8 times the 1600 rate. 8 times 1600 is 12,800. And so that's how they get the number in there. It's just eight times the amount because eight bits in a byte and there's eight chips on there. And okay, well, anyway, I don't need to go into detail on that. It's just eight times as much. DDR4 2133 then would be PC4 17,000. And some of you with quick calculators might say, oh, it doesn't make exactly 17,000. Nah, they just round it off to the nearest thousand. <laughs> so DDR4-2133 would be PC4-17,000. Um, and, and so you can just, you know, multiply by eight or divide by eight to get between the two, the DDR and the PC uh, numbers. What about low power RAM, DDR4L? I haven't seen much DDR4L in the wild. Uh, apparently it does exist, but uh, DDR4 is naturally low power anyways. So not many systems, in fact, none that I've seen are actually going to use DDR4L. DDR4U, that's a very, very low power RAM, specialty RAM. You don't need to worry about that. LP DDR4, low power DDR4, and sometimes called mobile DDR4, or MDDR4. Um, that's RAM that would be, for example, in your tablet or maybe your smartphone. And you don't buy that, it's soldered onto the board. So manufacturers of smartphones and tablets will buy that stuff and solder it onto the board, and that's how you get those RAMs. You don't buy it separately. GDDR4, GDDR5, GDDR5X, uh, GDDR6 now. G stands for graphics. It's a RAM that is specifically uh, tuned to work better with the graphics cards. GDDR5 is tuned is DDR5 tuned to use for graphics cards. The generations don't match up. 
We don't have DDR5 in the desktop space right now, but we do have GDDR5 and have for quite a few years. The generation things don't quite match up between the graphics and the regular DDR RAM. Just note that if it says G in the front, it's a graphics RAM, and you don't buy those separately either. Again, they're soldered onto the board when you buy the graphics card. If you do get the higher generation, it is faster. GDDR6 will be faster than GDDR5, given all other things are equal. And so if you have two graphics cards and one has GDDR5 and one has GDDR6 and all other things are equal, the GDDR6 one will probably run a little bit faster. Keep in mind when they put an X on the end of the name, for example, GDDR5X, it means that it generally is a little bit faster or better in one aspect of the memory uh, that, that's running. So they, they might you know, increase the bandwidth a little bit, they might increase the clock speed potential a little bit uh, with the X thing, but it's a little bit faster, it's a little bit better. Uh, right now we're generally on GDDR6 for uh, graphics cards or uh, some of the graphics cards from AMD are using HBM, high bandwidth memory, that's a different type of memory, and HBM2 will eventually be here uh, I think it might have already been used on the Radeon 7, but HBM, HBM2, HBM3, that's going to be a different thing than the GDDR stuff, but it's still graphics RAM and, and you don't buy that separately. So what about SIMS versus DIMMs? Oh, SIM stands for Single Inline Memory Module. This is a memory module here, and we'll get a close-up of these in just a minute, but these are memory modules. So SIM is single inline memory module. It means it has the memory channel only on one, uh, only one set of pins for both sides of the board. The dual inline memory module, I mean, it says has separate set of pins for both sides, each side of the board. Um, so dual is what we're using now for all things. Sodium is single, or no, sorry, small sodium is small outline dual inline memory module. So that's the smaller ones here. This is a sodium and it's just shorter and smaller. It, it does the same thing as the dim, but your computer has to be designed to use it. What about e, uh, UDIM, RDIM, FBDIM? Okay, UDIM is unbuffered dim, uh, RDIM is registered dim, FB is fully buffered dim, same, same as I think RDIM. So RDIM and fully buffered DIM, the same thing. They got a buffer in there. You will not be buying that. You're going to be buying a UDIM on buffered DIM. There's also a LR DIM, load reduce DIM. Ah, don't worry about that. It's for server stuff. ECC RAM. That's error correcting code RAM. Some computers will use ECC RAM, but not generally the ones that you're going to buy. Usually ECC RAM is used in servers and in scientific computing and where they need absolute accuracy and they need to check for the accuracy so they need to check for the errors. ECC RAM is generally not supported in most consumer motherboards. Check your motherboard manufacturer or your computer manufacturer to see if ECC RAM is supported or even required for your particular system. Generally not. Optane is not RAM. Optane is a uh, creation uh, with a collaboration between Intel and Micron, and it's more akin to a very, very fast SSD or, or cache memory for uh, hard storage, hard disk storage. It's not something that's akin to RAM. It, it, it is not RAM. So Optane is not RAM. All right. And then what should you buy then if you're building a new desktop? Um, or if you're trying to upgrade your desktop with more RAM memory, generally you buy non-ECC DDR4 SD RAM UDIMs. Okay, yeah, that's a big mouthful to say. But anyway, you might see all of those terms on there. So let's get uh, close up here and look at just some specifics of the uh, mo memory modules themselves. So here we are of a close up with some RAM. This is actually a SIM, a single inline memory module. It's an old one because they're not used anymore. And the difference between a SIM and a DIM, let's see if I can get that to focus and get it down a little farther, there we go. These pins right here, the metallic pins, are electrically connected with the pins on the back side. So each pin 
just, you know, you could literally wrap metal around if that was possible on a circuit board and this pin would be connected to the one behind it um, in the same spot. So the pins on each side are electrically the same. It used to be that you could just tell it was a SIM instead of a DIM because the SIMs had chips on one side and the DIMs, this is a DDR2 DIM, had chips on both sides, but that's not true anymore. The integration has gotten so good that they can put chips on one side and still have a DIM. What really makes a DIM a DIM is that the pins here, say the pin right next to the slot there, is going to be electrically different from the pin on the other side at the same spot. So those pins are different on each side. So how do they name the DIMs? We talked about this previously. Um, this one doesn't have the full naming scheme on it. Uh, this one does have the full, does this one have the full naming scheme? One of these has the full naming scheme on it. Uh, nope, they don't have the full naming scheme on it. So we'll just use this one for an example. Um, so this one, yeah, I get it in view. Okay, so you can see it's a two, two gigabyte SIM. Uh, 2R means dual rank, we'll talk about that a little bit, by 8, so each, uh, each memory module is with, you know, uses 8 bits or something like that. PC2 two means uh, the same as DDR2, uh, 6400, and that's times 8, so 6400 divided by 8 to get the DDR2, this would be DDR2 800, 800 megahertz memory stick. So this module is a DDR2. You notice that the DDR2 does not match up with the DDR1. The length is the same, but if you notice, this notch is not the same as the two notches on the SIM. So you can't put them in the same slot. DDR3 looks the same, and they got this big metal piece. This is called a heat spreader, and it's supposed to uh, spread out the heat and even out the temperatures in the RAM. Honestly, I think they just do it for looks because it, it doesn't seem to really matter much for performance on these things. Um, they just put the metal piece, I think, mostly for looks. It does make it look a lot cooler than just looking at the individual chips on the circuit board. Uh, but anyway, this is a DDR3. You'll notice that the slot does not line up again. This slot is not in the same spot as the slot that we had for the DDR2. So the DDR3 and DDR2 could not use the same slot. So what if we get the DDR4? out here. This is a DDR4 from the same company, a ballistics brand. Um, you notice that the slot here on the DDR3 is not the same as the slot on the DDR4. Uh, so you could not put these into the same spot. Even though the overall length is, has stayed the same for quite a long time, you can't put them in the same slot. Some eagle-eyed viewers might notice, oh wait a minute, doesn't the DDR2 have the same slot as the DDR4? Really? Does it? Let's take a look line it up carefully and you'll notice well not quite they're just a little bit off on the two slots there enough so that you couldn't put the DDR4 in the DDR2 slot and vice versa they made it pretty close um, I but not exactly it's just a little bit off on the registration there so you can't put one into the other so that's DDR3, DDR2, DDR4. These are all DIMMs, dual inline memory modules. Now what about these two on the side here? And I briefly picked that other one up. You notice that two of these almost make one of those. These are both DDR2s and so that's a DDR2 too. The, these are SODIMs. The smaller ones are what's called SODIMs. And the SODIMs are about, just about half, almost half the length of the other one. A little bit more than half the length of the other ones and it's smaller. Now what about this single rank versus dual rank? Um, single rank uh, means one bank of, of the correct, um, correct size of RAM chips or RAM units is more accurate. Dual rank means there's two of the same units to make the total equal to what the total wants to be. Now, which is faster? In practice, dual rank is slightly faster, and I mean really slightly faster, maybe 5% if you're lucky. Uh, so if you got a choice, maybe buy the dual rank instead of the single rank, but in practice, it probably won't matter, and if you're doing a general computing task, it's not gonna make any difference at all. You won't even notice a difference. Um, but single rank versus dual rank, these are both dual rank, and you th that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, because if you look at this, if you look at the chip population here, 
Now we've got four chips on this side, four chips on the other side. This one has eight chips. This one has eight chips on each side. That's 16 chips. And you think, oh, well, this is dual rank. This is single rank, right? Because this has got, got two of the same things. And so this has just got one of each of them. So they, these two make up one of these. Well, you'd be wrong on that, actually. This is a dual rank, as you can see on here. If you look at the naming scheme, it says two, there it is, 2R. So you can see this is a dual rank module. What about this one, though? One set of rows of chips. Is this a dual rank or a single rank? Oh, yeah, it's, it's also a dual rank. The 2R means it's a dual rank module, too. So these two are, are operating the same, even though they have a different number of chips. And that happens a lot with the technology that's increased uh, as the years have gone on. Now, what about the chips themselves? This is getting re real detailed. But the chips themselves, these chips that are soldered onto the board, they are only made by three manufacturers currently, generally. There's a couple others, but boy, the vast majority, over 90% are made by three manufacturers. Micron is one of them. This, these chips were made by Micron. Uh, you can see it says Crucial here. Crucial is a Micron brand, and they just brand their things Crucial, and it's actually Micron chips in there and Micron circuit board and all that stuff. So Micron makes chips. SK Hynix makes chips. If you look at the label on this one, you can see Hynix, and that's SK Hynix, and they do make RAM chips themselves, and they actually made this circuit board. So they made the DIM, the module. The third one is Samsung, and I have a Samsung one here. And you can see Samsung manufactures memory chips. So Sam Samsung made these chips, and they made the module on this particular one. That's, they all make their own modules. Um, uh, Micron tends to use the Crucial brand, or more recently, uh, Micron has been branding it Ballistics. It used to be Crucial Ballistics, now they're just branding it Ballistics, but Ballistics is also a Micron brand. What about this one? G-Skill. Okay, that's a G-Skill DDR4, clearly it says DDR4 right on there, and this is a Sodium. So who made the memory chips on this? <laughs> well, let's look at the label, see if we got any clues. We probably don't. They usually don't tell you who made the memory chips. It, the chips do say G-Skill on them. Um, but, oh, this one is the one that has the two, two names. So you can see it's a DDR4 2400. If you take 2400 times 8, you get 19,200. So you get the PC4 19,200 label. 8G by 1. It does not say these are dual rank or... Single rank, I think the 8G by 1 means it's a single rank module. Uh, I'd have to double check that. You could double check with the uh, product name on the manufacturer's website probably, and you could probably figure it out. But anyway, that's a DDR4 module, and you can see that the chips are not made by G-Skill, even though they're labeled G-Skill. They're either made by SK Hynix, uh, Samsung, or Micron, because that's, that's the only people that make the chips. But that doesn't mean that this is a bad module. Uh, G-Skill makes some quite good uh, products, and this, is, this one's been working really, really good in the application for which I bought it for. Thank you for watching the video all about RAM. Now, if you have more questions or some comments, please post them below. If you would like to know how to install RAM and how to select the RAM for your particular computer, I have two more videos, one about laptop RAM and one about installing and selecting desktop RAM and how to install that. Both are linked in the description below, so look for those. I hope to see you again sometime for another home tech adventure.